Hi, how you doing? I'm just here to talk about poverty and uh, not just poverty, but more so financial dependence and financial independence. What uh, got me into this issue right now or wanting to talk about this issue right now is recently I've seen posts on Facebook, I've seen some videos talking about the three things it takes to get out of poverty. And I think this is coming from a common source. Um, the Brookings Institution had done a study uh, and they came up with three things it takes to get out of poverty um, or to stay out of poverty. And those three things are, one, graduating high school, two, getting a full-time job, and three, waiting till you're 21 to get married and have kids. Of course, when I saw this, when I, you know, seen these posts, these videos, my response is that is absolute garbage. That's ridiculous. And, you know, I was looking at, with a side eye at some of the people who were making this post. But, hey, I had to stop and check. I said, wait a minute. What do they mean when they say poverty? And that's where I realized, you know what? I jumped to, I was too hasty. That's where I, I, I messed up in, you know, in making a judgment. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily agree, even after finding out what poverty is being, how poverty is being defined, that these are the best ways, but these are definitely ways to get out of poverty if you define poverty as the U.S. Census has, which for a single individual, is $16,000 a year. So yes, if you make $16,000 a year and you're single, according to the U.S. Census, you're not in poverty. That's a really low bar. Because in New York, even before the Fight for 15 took place, if you, the minimum wage was at eight seventy-five. So if you're working a full-time job at eight seventy-five an hour, guess what? You're not in poverty. You've made it. What more do you need to do? Success. Yeah, that's not the way it goes. Because as anybody who's tried to live on $16,000 a year knows, that's not enough. Um, and that's why I, I really said, hey, let me make this video because we need to be setting the bar higher and I want to actually talk about what it takes to and what people should really be aiming for. Because here's the problem. Even if you're making $16,000 a, a year and you're just, you know, you're by this, by the census de definition, not, po not in poverty. Are you, what kind of, what quality of life do you have? Are you like desperate for the next paycheck? Are you, like, is the fridge on empty, waiting, you know, to get some, an influx of cash so that you can put some food in the fridge? Are you, like, struggling to pay the rent? Are you one emergency, one, one situation away from just having the whole house of cards collapse on you? Yeah, that's not good, and that's not a that's not a I don't think that's not even a that's not even a legitimate goal to have if that's where you set your sights are yeah that's you, you need some more ambition so what I'm talking about is attacking financial independent financial dependence I want people to be able to be financially independent so that they're not just praying for that next paycheck to come through so that they can pay their their bill, uh, you know, their light bill, their rent, so that they can go buy some food and put it in the fridge, so that they can take care of the kids, so that they can live comfortably. I'm talking about having letting people be able to have enough so that their, you know, residence is is taken care of, they've got food, they can take care of their needs easily. 
and they're taking care of their needs easily and they have money to take care of their their wants that's financial independence um so that a person is not beholden to whoever is you know offering them that check for their labor but now that's the that's the mentality i was bringing into the you know the thought process of how effective are these three things in getting past financial dependence and into financial independence and the answer is they're not effective at all let's take them in turn graduating from high school what does high school teach you about being financially independent the opposite that's what it teaches you particularly public high schools are training grounds for financial dependence they are teaching you to work for a living to go to a job to get a paycheck to pay your bills to go back to the job to make more money to pay your bills it's uh yeah high schools are basically training grounds for for worker ants for worker bees that's what they're trying that's what they've turned us into well, that's what we do we just in this cycle this hustling for the weekend making a little bit of money spending a little bit of money now having to go back to make a little bit more cycle continues repeat so yeah high school it, it's not doing a lot for you you get that piece of paper and you know you got a bunch of people who get that budget that the piece of paper and they now can get a job in retail wow fast food awesome so you tell me how much is that really worth not a whole lot second thing full-time job now we just started touching on that clearly there's some full-time jobs that aren't worth jack you know um you're, you're making minimum wage in many of these full-time jobs and what does that do for you how does that how does that really improve your life it's keeping you just basically floating above water just you're just treading water and you do that for what 40 years 45 years and, and notice that time is, is is extending because I'm seeing more and more people who are over 60 over 65 and they're still working that's not a plan that's not success so you can't sit here and tell me that getting a full-time job is the key to success because it's it's keeping you financially dependent um so yeah so that's two down last thing waiting till you're 21 to get married and have kids this thing i actually think I actually have a I think we need to separate those two things the having kids and the getting married part because having kids no doubt it's an expense huge expense time energy money if you're trying to be successful if you're trying to build a business you're trying to do this um, having a child if you if you, let's say you're on your own if you're on your own and you have you, you have to take care of the child that's yeah that's going to be a huge uh, impediment in you taking care of these other things that uh, could help you become more financially successful and financially independent but marriage marriage can actually be an asset so waiting to you know waiting to your 21 I don't even think is I think that can actually be counterproductive because if you marry the right person, if you're somebody who's focused, you're goal oriented, you're trying to build something better, getting married as soon as possible, let's say you get married at 18, guess what? You've just formed a partnership. So now you and this other individual can 
um, can share expenses. You, you're each bringing, if you're each bringing paychecks into the, the income into the equation, but you're sharing uh, resources, okay, that, that just became an asset instead of a liability. So yeah, I, I, I don't think that waiting till you're 21 has, I, I, don't, I don't think that had any bearing on it to, as far as marriage is concerned. As far as kids, yeah, yeah, kids could definitely interfere with your success. But now, let me tell you what the three things are, I think, that have an impact on getting you to financial independence. First thing, financial literacy. Learning money, if money is what we're, what we're striving for, what we're busting our butts for, you know, 40 hours a week or more, then shouldn't we understand as much about money as possible? If this is the, if this is the lifeblood of the system that we're living in, we need to know more about it. We need to know about um, how to save better, how to invest um, interest rates. All there's so many different things about m money that we need to be no we need to be knowledgeable of because it's such a huge factor in our lives. So in, if if we need money, we need to understand how it works and how best to make it. Because once you understand that you realize a job is not the best way to make money. So that's step number one, becoming financially literate. And by the way, you don't necessarily need to go to college for that. You can pick books there. And, and this is uh, uh, something I, I'm a firm believer in self-teaching. You know, there's plenty of books on finance, accounting, investing. These are the things you need to be doing. Reading, reading these kind of materials learning and teaching yourself and 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 you can you know talk to individuals who and deal with individuals who have this knowledge to help you help guide you and mentor you along the way second thing ownership of business because working for somebody is never as good as working for yourself Because if you're working for yourself, your profit, the profit that your business is generating is coming back to you. If you're working for somebody else, the profit that you're generating for that business is going to them. Now you may say, oh, well, what if it's an unsuccessful business? Then yes, I'm talking about when you're dealing with equal businesses, if you're working for somebody else, it, it's, it's not as good as working for yourself as being able to take the profits for yourself. That's building for yourself. That's building for your future. That's building for, uh, that's moving towards financial independence. And lastly, I touched on it, you know, with the marriage point, but it's networking, relationships. Um, and so marriage is a, a more extreme and intimate form of networking and, and, and actually like forming an alliance. But even without marriage, networking I think is key to success because it will get you around people if you're networking cl clearly with the right type of people. It will get you around people who have done it already and can who help and who can help you get to the next level and stage in, in your life and in, in your career, in your success. So people who are, who are running their own businesses, networking with them will help give you valuable information and knowledge about what not to do and what to do. Plus, it puts you in a better position to, to know what deals are available, what resources are available, and to make key, key partnerships. Networking is key. So that's just... Uh, couple of things I wanted to share because I'm about really setting the bar higher and helping people get financially independent as opposed to just 
settling for, you know, what the the, the powers that be want us to be, like just over broke. I, I don't like jobs. I don't want to settle for a job. And I don't think you should have to settle for a job. We can do so much more, and we should do so much more for ourselves, and especially for our future and for our children. Thank you for watching the view video, like, share, and bring people over to the YouTube channel. Thank you.